Welcome back to Ace Academy. Where were we? This one. Let's do this. I wake up and yawn. Another day, another class. As if on autopilot, I get dressed and go through my morning routine, then I hop on my bike and drive to school. When I arrive, I head straight for class and wait for the professor. He arrives promptly and begins class. Good morning. This is gear arsenal. Today we'll okay, be discussing the differences between military grenade weaponry and those used in recreational matches. Did you say grenade weaponry? <laughs> Not sure that's what you meant to say, but that is what you said, so I'm going to hold you to that. Yawn, I already know this, or I want to learn. Well, it doesn't affect me, so, huh. Interesting stuff, blah blah blah. The difference between the two is that oh, military I done grenade this. weaponry are configured Damn for it. energy output, which can cause lethal damage. For energy output, which can cause lethal damage. Recreational weaponry is closely regulated, so it can't actually destroy the gear frame. Since the shields on a gear get the brunt of the damage, we consider a depowered gear in recreational matches as destroyed. Okay. What if someone brought in an unregulated weapon for a match? Before every match, the equipment of each gear is checked and double-checked to ensure the energy output is within proper parameters. What about the qualifier matches? There was a gear that did some energy output override thing. Hey, that's me! As one, the class looks at me. Uh. During that specific qualifier match, the gear's energy core is what surged with additional power, not his weapons. Although, I must admit, I've never seen a core do that before. Hopefully, this young man can enlighten us on how he did it. I have n uh, to be honest, I'm still trying to figure that out. Hmm. Interesting. Perhaps once you've figured it out, you'd be inclined to share with us what happened. Until then, let's get back to the lesson plan. I'm sure you all don't want to waste your time on something that won't be on the exam anyway. Hey, Lamau. Hey, Lamau. The class lets out a weak chuckle. Most refocus their attention on the professor, but a few students continue to look at me with interest. He returns to his lecture. Yawn. Once class ends, I hurry out of the room. My phone is already in my hand by the time I get outside. Let's see if anyone's free. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis. Um... Actually, that's... Uh, I, I miscounted. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. I, for some reason, Sace rhymes with Trace, so I'm inclined to say that. It's Boo. I'm on my way to grab something to eat, or on my way to grab something to eat when I pass by the campus bookstore. I have a lot of CN... <laughs> okay. I have a lot of CINY swag at home, but I don't have anything from Ace yet. It wouldn't hurt to take a look and see what they have. That's true. Uh, plus, remembering how impressed Nikki's friends were when they found out I went to Ace, I bet Nikki would love to have some Ace Academy swag. Is that how the cool kids say it? The the swag? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I walk in. The cashier counters are right by the entrance. As I go further inside, I can turn into the I can turn either into the clothing section or the book section. What does this have to do with boo? I don't need books. There are racks of t-shirts, sweaters, hoodies, etc., all in different all in different sizes with the Ace Academy school name and logo on them. There are even Ace Academy baby clothes. Wow. Are you expecting something? <laughs> are these kids like having need needs shit to dress their child their their child in? Cause we got baby mamas here. I don't know. I browse the t-shirt section and spot one I like. It's got the ace logo in the center and teal stripes around the edges, kind of like our uniforms. Next, I go, I check out the hoodies and immediately spot the perfect one for Nikki. It's pink and has the ace logo in the top corner. I grab the hoodie for Nikki and the t-shirt for me, then stand in line to check out. I'm zoning out, waiting for my turn in line when a familiar voice interrupts me. Is it Boo? Hey there. It's Boo! I spin around and see Yuna's smiling face standing in line behind me. She glances at my items and holds back a laugh. pretty hoodie you have there. <coughs> She's holding the but same I one. Think you might need a bigger size. Are you saying something, woman? I laugh, and Yuna lets out a giggle. No, this isn't for me. It's for my sister. I hold up the item I bought for myself. This is for me. Oh, well, I think she'll like it. Is your sister younger than you? Yeah, she's in her last year of high school. It seems like you two are close. Really? What makes you say that? Well, teenagers usually 
probably go through a phase where they fight with their sibling all the time. But since you're buying her a gift, it seems like you two must get along. <laughs> yeah, we do. Yuna smiles that warmly. That must be really nice. That must be really n I don't... Okay. Yeah, how about you? Do you have any siblings? Uh-oh. This is bad news. They probably, like, died or something. This is about to... Shit. Shit's about to go down. Yuna hesitates and shifts her items from one hand to the other. Finally, she shakes no. her head. She breaks eye contact and looks down. I feel like there's something she's not telling me. Ooh. But I feel like we're at the point where we can ask her about it. I feel, like, pretty confident in that. Like, I, I want to at least try. Are you okay? I'm sorry if I offended you. Yuna looks back at me with a smile that's too yes, cheerful. Yes, I'm fine. Please don't worry about me. Okay. Does that mean you'll tell me what's going on? What do you mean? I don't know. I get the feeling you're hiding something from me. I'm actually in a bit of a hurry, so I'm going to ring up my items in that empty lane over there. You know. I'll catch you later, okay? Ah, bad news. Darn. I wanted to try. I wanted to see what I can do, but I didn't, I didn't realize she, I guess, I think they probably died or something. That's probably what happened. Or like, just disowned themselves. Still wearing her forced smile, she goes to the next lane, pays, then hurries out of the store. I hope I didn't offend her. Once it's my turn, I pay for my items and leave. I'm in the campus gym finishing up my workout. What? I have a workout routine? <laughs> That's unrealistic. When I return to my locker, there's a mixed, missed text from Cowery. Emergency meeting, meet now in the hangar. Jeez, all caps. I'd better get going. Arrive at the hangar about the same time as show in Mayu. Cowery waits impatiently in front of her gear. That took you a while. What are you talking I just saw your- I literally came here as soon as I got your text. I texted before heading over here so we'd be on time. I guess you walk faster than me. Kaori addresses the rest what of the team. You guys? <sighs> Sorry. We were having lunch and I guess we lost track of time. Kaori blinks then waves her hand dismissively. Never mind. We have more important things to discuss. Like our sponsor situation. Everyone becomes serious. Our gears need a lot of maintenance to return to peak fighting condition. And the next round is tomorrow. Fuck. I don't know why, but everyone I talk to is really rude and unhelpful. Show and I show a knowing glance and Kauri catches what? us. Nothing, nothing. She continues to stare. It's just, sometimes you can come across a little harsh. I'm just honest. Sure, but honesty doesn't make people like you. You need to get in touch with your soft, warm, feminine side. Cowrie raises an eyebrow. That what you do? Yes. Yep. Absolutely. The warm thing, not the soft and feminine thing. Uh, we stare at him blankly. Uh, I'm just going to shut up now. Before you do, did you manage to get a sponsor? He folds his hands behind his head and leans into them. <laughs> you forgot to ask around, didn't you? Maybe. <laughs> He looks sheepish. Cowrie rolls her eyes. What about you, Mayu? Can your father sponsor us? Mayu shakes her head. Unfortunately, he's backing the team I was originally supposed to join. When I was invited onto the team, father was so happy, he promised he'd sponsor them. Even though I never joined them, he can't go back on his promise. Cowrie nods and faces me. You had me. that interview yesterday, didn't you? Yeah, I went to the interview with Warp Tech. It didn't work out. Why am I not surprised? It had less to do with me and more with our team status. I can show you the full report from the SBA if you want to know the official reason, but basically we weren't a high enough rank. I fish my phone out of my pocket. It flashes low battery warnings at me before it dies completely. Uh, hold on. I have to charge my phone. I head into the cockpit. My teammates call after me, but I ignore them. Once I plug my phone into the dock connection, it lights up with the charging symbol. Everyone's wearing confused faces as I climb out of the cockpit. Why what? Didn't you just use an outlet? Mayu points to an outlet in the wall. Uh, 
Uh, huh, Th that's new. No, they're not. I never noticed them before. What about those? And those? Sh show points to another. I, I feel like this is... So this music... Okay, so I need to recognize that this music plays when I'm supposed to look like an idiot. Or when I do look like an idiot. Nope, never seen them either. Besides, an atlas doesn't do me any good if I don't have a phone charger with me. I suppose that makes sense. Anyway, I guess we're back to square one. Back? We never left square one. Hey! Lamau! Hey! Don't give up hope just yet, I might have something. No, but my friend ESBA is still helping us search. Okay. In the meantime, the rest of us should continue our search too. I'll take another look at what Ace offers. Maybe there's some kind of campus grant or funding we can apply for. Mayu, do you think you could reach out to some of the other major corporations we haven't talked to yet? Maybe with your background, you'll have more luck than we would. Mayu nods. Maybe so can ask around local businesses? Okay. Good idea. Kauri looks at me. I'll follow up with my contact. She nods. Hopefully, we'll find someone. But there's a chance we might have to fight with our gears as is. I'm confident we'll get someone in time. Mayu smiles at me and nods. Show claps me on the back. Okay, we have our plan. Text me if you guys get any leads. We all nod. I'm off then. I've got some stuff to take care of. I'm off to go get my boo back. Reaching out to the businesses, show, and not playing your video games. Of course that's what I meant. The arcade industry is a lucrative place to find a sponsor. Absolutely. Mayu sighs. Show. He wears a signature okay, smile. Okay, okay. Let's go find us a sponsor. Mayu beams. The pair wave at us before heading out. I'll be going too. Tell me if your friend is successful. I nod and Kauri leaves. Nothing left for me to do but go home. That was short. But I need to go get my boo back. I, I offended her or something. I didn't mean to. I, I was I was confident that I could do it, but okay. Alright. In an eventful drive later, I arrive at home. I'm back! I walk into a nearly quiet living room. Looks like I'm the first one here. It feels a bit strange. Nikki's bright smile is usually here to greet me. Maybe she has an after-school club activity or something? I reach for my fog into phone to see if she texted me. My heart sinks in my, as my hand grabs air. There's a void where my phone should be. Crap, I must have left it in my gear. The sun is setting. It'll be evening by the time I reach campus. Hopefully it won't be too much trouble to get to Eagle after hours. I remember CINY was pretty restrictive on who can enter their hangar at night. Well, at least it's on the charger. <laughs> I hop on my bike and drive back to Ace. Surprisingly, traffic is heavy and takes longer than expected to reach campus. Maybe Boo is here. A handful of students cross the quad as they head towards either their evening classes or the bus station. Even though the sky is an inky darkness, the pathways on campus are still bathed in it with a soft light. It's kind of peaceful. Pied's Lounge is just as busy as always, but I don't recognize too many of the students here. Most of them must be upper upperclassmen in their third or fourth year. I slip through unnoticed and arrive at the hangar entrance. I'm about to swipe when the guard Hold stalks on. me. What's your business in the hangar? I forgot something. It's not a lie, but it would be too embarrassing to tell him the whole truth. Luckily, the guard doesn't seem to care. He gives me a quick once over and All nods. Right, go ahead and swipe. Thanks. Hey. Uh, I bring my student ID in proximity of the sensor. A second later, the success chimes sounds as the door slides open. I follow the tunnel to the hangar. The sound of power tools, machinery, and metallic ringing echoes along the walls. It makes sense for most of the repair work happens after hours. Ugh, excuse me. That was rude. I hate me. I hate myself. I want to die. It's a lot safer for them to work without the threat of students walking around causing potential disasters. I can't fucking talk my I'm like half burping instinctively my feet lead me to eagle what the a blue issue from an active terminal display illuminates my docking station that doesn't seem right I'm sure I turned off everything when I left cautiously I tiptoed towards my gear who are you I don't recognize this hair color I don't think we met anyone with that hair color It isn't Yuna, she has a different build. There's a figure crouched in front of Eagle. The person is dressed entirely in black and wearing a hoodie that hides his or her face. Still engrossed in my gear, the stranger hasn't detected my presence yet.
Uh, ooh. I don't think they're doing anything, right? Stay quiet. I don't know. Fucking why not? Staying in the shadows, I cautiously creep- I continually creep towards Eagle. As I get close to the distance between us, I notice how small and petite the person is and must be a girl. But I can't think of anyone who'd be so interested in my gear. I'm only a few steps away. She tenses as if noticing a presence. Before she can react, I- Okay, yeah, I think I needed to grab her on the shoulder. Before she can react, I grab her shoulder and roughly spin her to face me. It's Valerie. Okay, makes sense. Valerie, what are you doing here? She grins. Her gaze flicks to my hand still on her I shoulder. Never would have guessed you like it rough. Holy shit, you need to calm the fuck down. I am not amused. I scowl and the smile on her face wavers. What the hell are you doing to Eagle? She flinches at the harshness of my tone. Nothing, I promise. Y you don't you're like not good. You are obviously doing something with the terminal. That's not nothing. She holds her hands up I in defense. Like to get a better reading on your core. I'm not altering anything though. Just studying. Why? To figure out how your core was able to sustain such a high energy output for so long without completely burning out. Given the size of your core and the cooling system, the heat dissipation doesn't seem like it would have sustained longer than a few seconds. Yet it lasted almost ten minutes. You don't impress me, woman. Maybe there's a direct coolant injection to the primary source? I also didn't consider the acceleration of airflow given the hidden frame openings. Perhaps a quick calculation using... The more she talks, the faster my angle, anger melts away and is replaced by respect. She's more that meets the eye. Even though she claims to, she means Eagle no harm, how can I know she's telling the truth? I only met her a few days ago. Still, it seems like she's genuinely cur curious about how my core Here. works. I'll prove I wasn't changing anything. I watch as Valerie retraces a few screens with all the configuration data unmodified. Alright. I get it. You were curious, but you can't just break into other people's robots and mess with their parts. She I'm looks sorry. away. We're silent, and then she looks sideways so, at me. I guess you wouldn't want to know that your primary weapon can actually benefit from an airflow exhaust here and here. What? She points inside my you open right gear. There? Yeah, I think. It'll still require validation testing, though. You should probably get your engineer to check it out. My engineer? Yeah, you know. The person who makes sure all your gears are working properly and helps you with any upgrades or improvements. Don't the sponsors do that? Valerie shakes her head. When it comes to major repairs or new items, but an engineer on your team takes care of any general maintenance and the like. Oh. Maybe we should get an engineer. I feel like that might be a good thing. <laughs> I'll ask my team about getting an engineer. It sounds like we could really benefit from you one. Definitely would. She scoots closer and smiles. For you. you already have one person perfect for the job. Really? And bats her eyelashes. She scoots clo even closer and bats her eyelashes at me. Who's that? Valerie sighs. Just think about it. There's another pause. To avoid the awkwardness, I shut down the open terminal. So we should get yeah. going then. Neither one of us moves. Don't touch my gear again without my permission, I sweetie. I, won't. I wait for her to leave, but she doesn't budge. Okay, Bye. goodbye. She stands in place and waves. You Neither aren't leaving. Are you. Okay, on the count of three, we'll leave together. One, two, three! Both stay put. You didn't move. Neither did you. You bitch. What the hell are you kids still doing here? Security catches us off guard, and we sim simultaneously stammer nonsense. He shakes his head. Business here is done, and then you have to leave. Valerie glances at me, and I glance at her, still waiting for her to move. She doesn't. Suddenly, a strong hand grips my arm. Hey! Huh? The guard holds Valerie too. He physically leads us towards the exit. Get home. Do I have- did I actually get my phone, though? We pass through the doors and the guards shut them behind us. Valerie and I are once again standing in well, silence. I'll see you around. Yeah, see you. Weird. Okay. We both head our separate ways. She walks toward the dorms while I head to the parking lot. Once I reach my bike, I drive home. 
Nikki still isn't home by the time I return. Where can she be? I reach into my pocket and for my phone and grasp empty air. See? What? I, how could I go through all this and not get my phone? Well, at least I didn't go back. God, that was a big, fat waste of time. I turn off my alarm and roll out of bed time to get ready for class, and I don't have my phone. As I head downstairs, I feel uneasy. Today will be our first match. I really hope Yuna was able to work her magic and get us a sponsor. Nikki is rummaging through the living room, and I smile when I see her. Even when I'm stressed or worried, Nikki always seems to know how to put my mind at ease. Hey, Nikki, just the person I was Wait, hoping to you're see. Hungry, you have to find your own food. I don't have time to cook today. She doesn't pause to look at me when she speaks. I wasn't going to ask you for food. But uh, she continues gathering what she needs for the day. Hmm, not quite the welcome I was expecting. You okay? Yes, just in a hurry. Do you need a ride to school? She freezes, then rolls on me. me a ride? A little too late for that. She throws her books into her bag. I don't want to say that, but that's really funny. <laughs> Are you sure you're okay? Why wouldn't I be? I don't know. Did something happen? She just stares at me. Uh oh, did I do something wrong? Why is she looking at me like it's my fault? Why well, don't answer Nikki's size? To to See you later. <laughs> I should have said it's that time of the month again. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> She's out the door before I can say goodbye. That was weird. Shrugging, I head into the kitchen and whip up a quick, quick breakfast. Hopefully she's in a better mood the next time I see her. She probably, like, is dating a guy. <laughs> After eating, I hop on my bike and drive to school. Hey, Lamau, it is Boo. Alright, I'm gonna get her back. I'm gonna make up for my, for my screw-up for offending you. I'm sorry, Boo, I just, I, I didn't, I didn't mean to. It just happened. Yuna's already in class when I arrive. She walks, she sit waves as I walk in and I sit beside her. Hey, Yuna. Hey. She wears her eye grin and fidgets with excitement. You seem like you're in a good I mood. Am. She pauses. Aren't you? <laughs> I guess I so. you'd be a little more excited than that. About what? Really? How come? She seems confused. Uh, What? What are you talking you about? I found you a sponsor. I don't have my phone. Oh, that's amazing! How did I you manage that? Favor, but that doesn't matter. I've already set up your account with them, and repairs are underway. They started as soon as the paperwork was signed, so your gears will be as good as new in time for the match today. I don't know how to thank you. you she don't blushes. Have to. I promise I'd find you one, and I always keep my promises. I don't know what I'd do without you. You're a lifesaver. Yuna blush, Yuna's blush deepens as she seems pleased by my words. You should come to meet the team before the match. We can share sure, the good news together. As long as I won't intrude on anything. Uh oh. Well, Cho's fine. He isn't going to do anything. He's she's my boo, okay? You won't. She nods. So, we we I know we won't get our scores back this class, but how do you think we I'm did on the sure project? We did really well. As long as we don't have to present it, I'm all good. Yeah, me too. We worked great together over the weekend. I'm glad I had someone who was interested in the project as I was. I feel the same way. Our discussions helped us build really strong arguments, and I'm sure we'll get a really high mark. Those are some pretty confident words, young lady. You blush. <laughs> I guess I'm just feeling lucky to have such a great partner. Oh, you're too kind. You're just so sweet. God. You're disgustingly sweet. I can't help but grin at her words. As our conversation winds to a close, the professor comes in and starts the class. This is why she's boo. God. The professor wraps up the lesson and students begin to file out of the classroom. As I'm about to leave, the professor stops me. Miss Misaki, if you could kindly join us as well. Shit. This is bad. You and I glance at each other. I whisper to her, Do you know what this is about? She shakes her head. We obediently follow the professor back to her desk, ignoring the curious looks of our departing I classmates. Had a to look over your paper. She pauses, then breaks into a huge and smile. I loved it. 
Both Yuna and I wear matching in grins. Fact, I think it's worthy for publication in the Center Robotics Journal. And I wanted to ask for your permission to submit Holy shit! Yuna's mouth hangs slightly open in amazement. Even though she predicted our project would be great, I don't even think she had considered it would be this great. If you think it's good enough for submission, then I would hap I would be happy to have it submitted. Yuna I'd nods. I'd also be happy to have it submitted. Great. Stop by my office hours when you two have a chance, and we can go over the edits. Once that's all done, I'll handle the submission paperwork so you two don't have to worry about any of the logistical details. Great. And I hope you will keep up your hard work. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Great. We're fantastical peoples. Woohoo! Ow. That didn't even hurt my voice. I don't even... Ugh, I'm just being stupid. I just... When we're dismissed, we gather up our belongings. Can you believe it? I knew we'd do well, but I didn't dream we'd do that well. Well, jeez. Yuna's excitement is infectious as a bright smile lights up her face. Yeah, it's a little hard to believe. This proves you make a great team. It's true. Maybe we'll have more opportunities to work together. I hope so. We head out of class together. I can tell today is going to be a great day.